SpaceX has built its name on turning sci-fi dreams into everyday reality. One of the clearest and most revolutionary examples of this is their work in recovering and reusing parts of their Falcon 9 rockets. What started as a bold, almost laughable experiment has now become a routine part of their launch operations. Most people are now familiar with the dramatic footage of Falcon 9's first stage landing either back on solid ground or on a drone ship in the ocean. But this wasn't always the norm. In fact, before SpaceX, no one had successfully reused an orbital-class rocket. They were the first company in history to land and reuse a rocket booster that had gone to space. That milestone was achieved in March 2017, when SpaceX relaunched a Falcon 9 booster that had previously flown in April 2016. That moment alone marked a turning point in the space industry. Since then, SpaceX hasn't just done it again, they've done it over and over. As of now, they've reflown individual boosters more than 20 times each in some cases, and collectively, the Falcon 9 fleet has achieved well over 300 booster landings and reuses. That's insane when you realize what's happening here. They're sending a 14-story rocket to space and bringing it back within minutes, landing it upright like something out of a sci-fi film. And what's more telling is how the rest of the industry has responded. Whether other companies admit it or not, it's obvious that SpaceX forced a mindset shift across the launch sector. Now, almost every new rocket being developed features reusability in its design. Rocket Lab's upcoming Neutron rocket, for example, is being designed with a reusable first stage that returns to Earth after flight. Even Blue Origin's long-delayed but highly anticipated New Glenn rocket plans to reuse its massive first stage. These are not coincidences. These are direct responses to what SpaceX proved was possible. But while most people are familiar with the dramatic landings of the Falcon 9 boosters, there's another massive achievement that often flies under the radar. SpaceX's success in reusing the rocket's nose cone, officially known as the payload fairing. This upper section of the rocket doesn't get nearly as much attention as the boosters, but reusing it has saved SpaceX hundreds of millions of dollars. Reusing the fairing is not easy at all. Sure, they nailed the first stage landings with incredible precision, either returning to land or onto a drone ship in the ocean, but the fairings? That was a different story. These are the two shell-like parts that protect the payload as the rocket travels through the atmosphere. They split and fall away once the rocket reaches space. For years, companies just let them fall into the ocean or burn up, but SpaceX saw them as reusable parts that could save millions per launch. The problem? Fairings don't come back from low altitudes like boosters do. When a Falcon 9 booster separates from the upper stage, it still has enough fuel left in reserve to perform a precise sequence of burns, called the boost back entry and landing burns, which allow it to slow down, control its descent, and navigate itself to a specific landing spot, whether that's a drone ship or a landing pad on shore. It also uses grid fins to steer itself during re-entry and deploys landing legs for a soft touchdown. In short, the booster is like a guided missile in reverse. It can actively control its return every step of the way. Rings, on the other hand, don't have that kind of control. Once they separate from the rocket at high altitude, usually around 100 to 120 kilometers up, they're essentially just big lightweight shells falling back to Earth. They don't have engines, they don't have guidance systems, and they don't have landing legs. The only tools they use to slow down are cold gas thrusters, to orient themselves properly, and parachutes, which deploy in stages to reduce speed before splashdown. But even with parachutes, their descent is highly unpredictable. They're at the mercy of upper atmospheric winds, shifting weather, and ocean currents. So at first, SpaceX tried to catch them midair. They used two ships equipped with giant nets. The idea was to snag the fairings before they touched the ocean, preventing damage from salt water. But catching a fairing with parachutes in windy conditions and choppy seas, that turned out to be harder than expected. The ships were small, the ocean is massive, and even a small change in wind could throw the fairing off target. The success rate was under 20%. Realizing the catch method was just too complex, SpaceX simplified the process. 
They chose to let the fairings splash down into the ocean instead, and then scoop them up with recovery ships using cranes. The idea was basic but effective. However, ocean water, especially salt water, can cause big problems for electronics. To fix this, engineers made a smart adjustment. Originally, the fairing had electronics and sound-dampening gear spread all over its body. SpaceX moved all the sensitive components to the top section, away from where water is likely to collect. They also worked on keeping the fairing upright during splashdown to minimize water intrusion. This small change made a big difference in how reusable the fairings became. Instead of spending millions trying to catch fairings mid-air, they now just let them fall, recover them from the ocean, and refurbish them. The payoff from fairing recovery has been massive. Today, SpaceX recovers around 99% of its fairings, which is nothing short of remarkable. And these components are far from cheap. Each pair of Falcon 9 fairings costs about $6 million to manufacture. That means every time SpaceX successfully recovers them, it's essentially saving $6 million that would have otherwise ended up at the bottom of the ocean. Musk even joked in a 2024 Starbase presentation that it's like watching $6 million fall from the sky. But the numbers are no joke. According to Musk, SpaceX has reused fairings more than 300 times, translating to an estimated savings of $1.8 billion. That's not just cost-cutting, that's rewriting the economics of orbital spaceflight. Now, contrast that with NASA's current launch system, the Space Launch System, SLS. While SpaceX is breaking new ground by reusing almost every part of its rockets, SLS is still operating on a throwaway model. Each SLS rocket costs over $2 billion per launch, and almost every single component, booster segments, engines, core stage, is discarded after use. That includes parts that cost tens of millions individually, like the RS-25 engines, which were originally developed for the space shuttle and are among the most expensive rocket engines ever made. They're literally dumping gold into the ocean every launch, and that's the core difference. SpaceX treats hardware like assets. They build it, fly it, recover it, refurbish it, and fly it again. NASA's SLS, on the other hand, follows the same model used in the 1960s and 70s, build it once, fly it once, and throw it away. It's a model born in the Apollo era, when the goal was to beat the Soviet Union to the moon, not to create a sustainable system for long-term exploration. And while it worked back then, using the same philosophy now, in 2025, makes SLS feel like it's stuck 50 years in the past. What's even more frustrating is that SLS isn't just outdated. It's astronomically expensive. A single SLS launch costs more than 30 Falcon 9 launches. Think about that. For the price of one SLS launch, SpaceX could put over two dozen payloads into orbit using Falcon 9 and reuse most of the hardware in the process. And it's not like SLS is more capable. Falcon Heavy and Starship are already exceeding or aiming to exceed SLS's performance at a fraction of the cost. Meanwhile, SpaceX is innovating not just with boosters, but with every part of the rocket, even the fairings. They're refining recovery techniques for parts that most people didn't even think were worth recovering. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.